YouTube was it going? The Goat House is back with some more NFL free agency signing grades. This is our fourth video, so three other videos out full of grades. If you haven't seen them, check them out. Most recent videos on the channel. But here's our fourth one. We have some big signings go down. Jets making some moves. Marcus Williams to the Ravens. Uh, Randy Gregory with the swap. Uh, so we're going to grade all those. Excited to break it down. Join us on Twitter for live updates, thoughts, rumors, and more. Uh, there's a, it's on your screen. There's a link down below for that at Goat House NFL. You're missing out if you're not found it. Like, subscribe to your notifications on full offseason coverage here. We're just getting started. So, uh, yeah, join us. We much appreciate it. Here's our Twitter. Brian Balaga got cut. We predicted that. Uh, Leo Collins, Patriots trying to trade for him. That would be a pretty big pickup. More updates as they happen. So, at the end of the last video, we graded Randy Gregory going on the Cowboys. Uh, and that's the risk of doing all these grades early but that's what the people want that's what i want it's what the people want uh so he swaps to the broncos the same deal five years 70 million 14 million per year so in the last video uh, i graded randy gregory to the cowboys uh in a it is a little different to the broncos um because i do think you know he was starting to work with the cowboys you know very well kind of fitting in that four three so he goes to the broncos three four I'm pretty confident with him making that slight adjustment. Um, no real worries. It's just he was a little bit more of a fit with the Cowboys. It was working out. And the five years kind of made sense with the Cowboys because they're so tight on cap space, uh, you know, now and in the future. Well, actually, they cleared a bit now. So being able to spread out that money for along five years kind of made sense. Uh, for the Broncos – he didn't really necessarily have to do that. Have to do that. Um, I guess to beat out the Cowboys, they had to offer the same thing, uh, you know. But yeah, there's a little bit of a risk here because I mean, 14 million per year doesn't look like a risk. But the five years, you know, how will he be away from Dallas? Is he kind of going to go back to his normal ways? He's switching the scheme a little bit up. So are you going to, you know, is it? You know, hopefully it works out because are you stuck for how many extra years there? So maybe there's a little bit more of a risk if it's the Broncos over the Cowboys. Um, overall, I still like it. Uh, 14 million per year. A couple pass rushers that I think he's better than got 15 are getting 15, 16 per year. Uh, I'm going to give it an A minus. You know, a little bit of risk with the length, uh, five years. Uh, but um, yeah, it sounds like they liked Gregory more than Chandler Jones, maybe because there's upside for Gregory. I think Chandler Jones would have been a better fit. But overall, good. You got kind of your your set with your pass rush. At least your starters, Chubb and Gregory, looks pretty good. Uh, they got their run-stopping guy we talked about in the last video on DJ Reed. They got their quarterback last week, obviously. So uh, Broncos improving. They continue to improve. Uh, next up, yeah, Marcus Williams goes to the Ravens. Five years, $70 million, $14 million per year. So it's weird seeing the Ravens get kind of a true free safety, a coverage-free safety, but kind of figure that would be the case you know they moved they moved on from Don Martindale they're switching up their defense a little bit uh, I'm going to be valuing coverage a little more or maybe some zone coverage um, so it made sense you know to add a, a free safety uh, to pair with strong safety Chuck Clark it kind of made sense uh, Marcus Williams yeah I was kind of more comfortable with around the franchise tag range maybe 13 million so 14 million a, a little bit here I maybe wasn't high on him as a lot of other people, a lot of other people ranked him like towards the top five or so in free agents. I wasn't really close to there. Um, you know, I didn't. I thought he was better two years ago than last year. But it'd be interesting to see him on a, on a new team here. He's a young, uh, young safety that's very solid in coverage that can continue to improve. Uh, five years, seventy million, upgraded the back end for their defense. Yeah, a little more than I would have liked. Um, just a little bit more. I'll give it a B here. Uh, you know, just upgrading the coverage on the back end there, something the Ravens, even with their scheme before, like they didn't value it that much. It's something they kind of needed, you know, so it's something they kind of been missing for some time. Uh, now let's see if they can get some of those run stoppers back or add some new ones because they don't want to, you know, you're you're improving your coverage, uh, but you don't want to take a major hit in terms of stopping the run there. Uh, and to see, if, you know, they, they need a pass rusher as, as well, like a veteran one for them. So we'll see if they can add that. Give them a B for this one. Uh, next up, James Daniels to the Steelers, three-year, $26.5 million, $8.83 million per year. James Daniels has some good play at guard and at center. Uh, I thought he had a really good year last year. I think the Bears' problems were their tackles. I think the interior was fine. Um, 
Yeah, I was starting to. I mean, I was. I was questioning the Steelers' other couple moves, and I what kind of wanted to see them kind of go big and get somebody that's a sure thing starter for them. And uh, and I think they went and did that here with James Daniels. I really like this signing. Uh, eight point eight three million per year. I thought he would get ten million, maybe a little bit more. Um, I mean, we talked about Austin Corbett, guard. He went to the Panthers. We talked about it in the last video. Uh, he got more than James Daniels. And uh, there was nothing wrong with Corbett's deal. I gave it an A minus, but I really don't know how James Daniels doesn't get more than him. Uh, this is probably one of my maybe my favorite signing of uh, free agency so far. So I wasn't in love with the the first couple moves from the from the Steelers. Um, I like this one a lot, as you can tell. I gave him an A plus. I think this is their best lineman right now. Um, I think he's going to start at guard. I think it helps them definitely a lot. I think it's cheaper than what I expected. So uh, I'm, I'm liking this one. I'm, I'm so very surprised that he didn't get more, but more surprised that the Bears didn't want him back for $8.83 million. You know, they had a bunch of space, moved on a bunch of defenders, got a defender, and they kind of let Daniels walk. It's a little confusing, very confusing, actually. Um, so A-plus to the Steelers, I, that's one of my favorite deals so far. Uh, I think it's ex extremely good value. They get better, and this is probably their best offensive lineman. Uh, Dolphins offensive lineman Connor Williams, uh, two year, fourteen million. So Dolphins get a guard that they needed. They're still, you know, maybe trying to get a tackle as well. But they get that guard, Connor Williams, was showing some promise last year. Struggled a bit in that playoff game um, uh, against the Forty ers actually. Mike McDaniel, so coached against uh, against him and um, believes he can work with a young guard here. So. Seven million per year. Yeah, you know, I I would probably would have guessed this guy would have been an overpay guy. I thought you know maybe somebody would pay him based on what he can become, not really what he is. Seven million is less than I expected. Um, you know, I I think it's you know, it's only two years. I think it's a pretty good deal here. I think I'm I'm gonna give this one an A. So some of these, most of these guard deals I think are pretty good, and for some reason they're kind of getting these guys that are sitting a little bit are getting less, but they're pretty solid talked about Daniels and now Connor Williams so the Dolphins get a little better there in the interior of their offensive line which is much needed they get an A for that so another good job of the Dolphins uh next up the Bills JD McKissick I think one of the more interesting signings of in my opinion I'm kind of weird because you probably think these big name guys with the big money are probably the most interesting signings but JD McKissick to the Bills two years seven million you know why it's so interesting I talked about it on Twitter a little bit um you know first glance it's, it's you kind of get I'm not getting frustrated, but you kind of almost get frustrated with the Bills where it's like, you know, messing around with these guys that are kind of high-end two running backs, um, you know, and just not going and get that legit number one. So that's like, a you know, you got a lot of these guys, when are you going to get the legit number one? But then you really look at it, you know, J.D. McKissick, um, extremely underrated, extremely dangerous in the passing game, um, you know, very good. He, he can continue to get better in the right passing system. He can be even better and then here you got your the Bills system with Josh Allen to pass first um I love the fit I think we're going to get the most out of JC McKissick JD McKissick um on the Buffalo Bills 3.5 million per year is is cheap uh, I like that it's on a one-year deal two-year deal makes sense to me um you know so you do question are they just going to finally go get that legit number one running back you kind of question that but you got to love this fit, and it's something to get excited about. Like, I can't wait to watch McKissick in the passing game uh, in the Bills' offense. So, I think just fit, excitement, value on the deal um, makes me like it. So, I'm giving it an A there. So, as for the reasons I explained, I think it's one of the more interesting signings so far, even though it's kind of a cheap, under-the-radar one here. So, I give it an A. I kind of like what the Bills are doing so far, um, even though it's nothing major. Uh, you know, they were a team that was supposed to be super quiet. I think even uh, they haven't been, you know, even though it's smaller moves, I I think they're, um, I mean, they got Saffold too, which we never even saw the details on that. So I, I kind of like what the Bills are doing here. Uh, the Jets, Jets signed DJ Reed uh, from the Seahawks. So the corner, you know, thought he would be a, uh, you know, maybe a slot corner because of his size there, ends up being out an outside corner. Um yeah, I think the it's a tough one. You know, eleven million per year is definitely more than I would have thought he would have got. It's weird because J.C. Jackson and Carlton Davis got less than we thought, and then Traverius Ward and then and then D.J. Reed or excuse me, yeah, D.J. Reed, um, getting 
more than we, did I say that backwards? No, I said that right. Okay, with the top tier corners getting less than expected, Reed and Ward pretty much in the same area getting more than expected. So what the heck's going on with the cornerback market? It kind of, you know, people are valuing a little less, but then teams are kind of panicking for the just the available guys, uh, you know, and then you know paying eleven million per year for a guy like Reed. So. I don't love this one. I thought they were kind of going to go after a better corner out there, maybe a guy that's a little more proven on the outside, a little more length. Um, it's a lot It's a lot more money than I expected, but they need a corner pretty bad. They get one. He's improved. He has some upside. Um, you know, $11 million per year is not, you know, just it's not like a re- an outrageous amount. I'm going to give it a C-plus on this one. You know, they get better at corner. It's a little more than I thought. I I do think there's some risk in here because there's some thought that, um, you know, he's an inside, just an inside guy. The Jets have plenty of those guys. They definitely want to play him outside. Um, So there is some risk in this one, kind of borderline more I'm talking about. Drop it to a C, C, C C-plus range for the Jets here. Uh, We do have another Jets signing to talk about. Uh, Russell Gage goes from the Falcons to the Buccaneers. Buccaneers three year, thirty million. There's no incentives on that one. Ten million per year. Um, so ten million probably a little more than I would have predicted going into free agency. I, again, I think the Christian Kirk deal just blew everything up, uh, and then maybe Zay Jones as well. So it's different ways you can look at it. You know, ten million going into free agency looks like a little bit of an overpay, but I probably would have guessed yeah eight and a half. So it's not too much. Uh, but then based on what the, happened in the market, $10 million actually makes sense to gauge. So it just depends on how you want to look at that. Uh, there is no incentive, so it's just straight up. It's not going to increase more than that. Most of these deals can uh, increase more. Um, I like the pairing with him and him, Godwin, and Mike Evans, too. They need another receiver, but it wasn't like 100% necessary for them to go get like a star receiver. They already have two of them, you know, so they just kind of need another guy, and he improved at the end of last year. So uh, overall, I, I kind of like this one. It's kind of grown on me a little bit. Again, $10 million, a little more than expected going in the year, but no big deal, especially with the receiver market is what has happened to it. I'll give it a B plus. Buccaneers getting better. You know, there's teams that um, – you know, it seems like it would be okay if they're a little quiet like the Buccaneers based on their roster and their cap space, uh, but they're making moves, and there's other teams with loads of cap space is making questionable moves or making no moves at all. So uh, you got to respect the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, uh, and the Brady effect is pretty damn real, uh, obviously. Uh, and they, we talked about on Twitter they traded for Shaq Mason. It was a hell of a trade by them as well. Uh, so back to the Jets, and speaking of the Buccaneers, Jordan Whitehead, the safety who had a pretty good year, uh, last year goes to the Jets two year fourteen point five million at seven point two five million per year. So he kind of had one really good year. Before that he was okay, but last year he was very very solid, kind of like a borderline top one hundred player last year in my opinion. Did a bit of everything. They they kind of had their interchangeable safeties. Uh, you know where Winfield would be the free safety, Whitehead would be the strong. They'd blitz Whitehead or they bring Winfield up, put Whitehead back, or they put Mike Edwards up and blitz him. You know, so pretty interchangeable. I think his best play is, you know, as almost as a strong safety. Uh, and the Jets kind of have some of that going for them. They kind of have the interchangeable safeties, uh, and they need another safety. And I think Whitehead is continuing to improve. You know, the, I guess the risk would be was he kind of just a one-year guy and only on that Tampa scheme, which is pretty unique. But I don't really view it as that much of a risk because you pay him $7.25 million per year. Uh, he, he played a lot better than, you know, just based off last year than the guys in that price range. So I really like the I really like this one. I guess the only question is how will he be? Was it a one-year thing? How will he be away from home, away from that scheme? But I like it for the Jets. I, I like it. Conti- continue to grow. I'm going to give it an A. So the Jets doing some work here, getting better, getting some guys in here. Uh, and then uh, a list of other signings here. Lions bring Charles Harris back, two-year, $14 million. You know, a year ago, I think that $14 million for Charles Harris, you'd be like, you're out of your mind. But he played pr- fairly well last year. Glad they didn't really overpay. $7 million is a lot. Give it a B. I really like the Broncos getting Josie Jewell back, not really known as a big signing, but uh, he was injured all of last year. But a fairly solid, consistent, balanced linebacker. Uh, for two year, eleven million. I'm actually surprised nobody beat that. I gave that an A plus. Uh, Malik Collins back to the Texans gave it a B. Um, you know, right around we thought you know he would he would get maybe a little bit more based on his production. Uh, Commanders bring Bobby McCain back. Thought maybe they would upgrade at the other safety spot. That's not the case. Two year, eleven million is a pretty good deal. Um, you know, in t- terms of value per year. So I gave it a B plus Patriots signed James White, two year, 5 million. It's a cheap deal. You know, they like to have James White there. So I gave that one an A 
Landon Roberts, one year, $3.25 million. I mean, it's tough because you kind of wonder, you know, will the Dolphins get better at that position? Maybe that's a spot they can get better at, middle linebacker. It's pretty good value, though, just a one-year kind of cheap deal, so I gave it an A-. Chargers signed Chase Daniel. Yeah, keeping him around for two more years. Good to have in the building there, obviously, for anybody. It's a very cheap deal, so an A. Oren Burks, two-year, $5 million. It's kind of one of those random deals. Haven't seen much of Burks yet. Um, you know, it's just it's not a bad deal. It was like necessary for the 49ers, you know, so I gave it a B minus. Cleef Raymond was, you know, pretty solid for the Lions. Definitely some upside. Kind of has that home run ability, that big play ability. I gave it a B for the Lions. You know, and another one of those guys who same for the Lions, like a year ago, did you say say Raymond's gonna get a nine and a half million contract? I think you're crazy. So maybe a little risk with some of those. Can they continue to keep it up? Colt signs Zara Franklin, three-year, twelve million rotation guy in defense, special teamer. Gave it a B. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of typical Colt so far. They say very quiet free agency, despite having loads of cap space. I thought maybe this year would be different, uh, but not really the case. So a little disappointed with them so far. But some of the re-signings have been decent. And the Texans signed Farrell, Farrell Brown, their tight end, and yeah, one year, four million. I know that's like cheap. It's only one year. It's just like, you know, we haven't seen a whole lot of him so far. It just felt like a guy you could have got for the minimum. Like, I don't think anyone was going to pay him $4 million. Uh, they still like his upside, but I gave a C minus. A little, little, little confusing, but nothing major there. So, uh, my phone's going off once again. So, it just happens during every video. So, there's probably more signings going down right now. They will be in as long as we have the details. Uh, they will be in the next video. We've got loads of these videos. This is the fourth one, and there's going to be more. Uh, you know, so if you if you're looking for other signings that already happened, they're probably in they're definitely in one of the recent videos that, that went up on the channel. So check those out. I'll put links pinned in the comment section. Follow our Twitter for updates, answering questions, breaking news, rumors, thoughts, everything on our Twitter. Really, if you're not following that, you're missing out there. So check it out. It's gonna do it for this one though. Everyone, thanks for watching. Goodbye.